a young pirate and his band set off on an adventure in search of lost treasure. Along the way, they must defeat sea monsters and powerful enemies to reach their goal. Today we're going to recap the story of the One Piece live action from 2023. 22 years ago, in the port city of Logatown, a man named Gold D. Roger served his elimination sentence. He became known as the King of the Pirates and, after several years of searching, Garp, the Vice Admiral of the Navy, finally managed to capture him. Despite being considered a criminal, Gold D. Roger had a legion of followers and, before he perished, he decided to give a clue as to where his legendary treasure could be found. In front of a huge crowd of fans and haters, the pirate claims to have hidden one piece on the Grand Line and promises that whoever finds it will have fame, wealth and power. After saying his last words, Roger was eliminated and the Great Age of Pirates began. Men and women full of hope set out to sea in search of the Pirate King's lost treasure. Among them is Monkey D. Luffy, a young man who has dreamed of finding the One Piece ever since he was a child. All he needs is a loyal crew and a ship, because his boat is sinking and he can't swim. To avoid being swallowed up by the ocean, the young man has to hide inside a barrel and is carried away by the waves until a boat decides to rescue him. After a few days on the sea, his barrel ends up in the middle of a war zone between two pirate ships. One of them belongs to Captain Alveda, who is a fugitive wanted by the Navy and has a bounty of five million berries on her head. After destroying the enemy vessel, the woman orders her crew to take all the supply barrels back to her ship and among them is the barrel where Luffy is hiding. Despite hating the pirates and especially Captain Alveda, Kobe is forced to follow her orders. Otherwise, he risks being thrown overboard. That night, while working in the hold, the young man hears a noise and discovers that there is an intruder on the ship. When he sees him, Luffy introduces himself and claims to be a pirate. As soon as he gets a ship, he plans to sail to the Grand Line, which has become known as the Ship Graveyard. In an attempt to help the young man escape before his captain wakes up, Kobe helps him steal one of the lifeboats, but Luffy accidentally wakes up the entire crew. Believing that Kobe has betrayed her, Alveda attacks him, but Luffy manages to prevent the young man from being hit and eliminates the crew. During the battle, one of the men shoots at the invader, at which point the crew discovers that Luffy's body is made of rubber. His ability to stretch allows him to dodge all of Alveda's attacks and, with a single blow, he throws the woman off the ship. That day, Kobe finally manages to get rid of the pirates who captured him and heads for the Grand Line with Luffy. During the journey, Kobe asks his new friend about the origin of his powers. So the young man decides to tell his story. As a child, Luffy's dream was to join Shanks' gang and sail the seas with his crew. However, the young boy was too young to sail and was always trying to prove to his friend that he was ready to become a pirate. In one of these attempts, he caused an injury to his face, the scar of which will remain with him for the rest of his life. After having his wounds stitched up, Luffy goes to rummage through the treasures the crew found on their last expedition and finds a mysterious fruit. After eating it, the young man goes to the bar where Shanks and his men are and, at that moment, everyone discovers that he has gained superpowers. This happened because, without knowing it, Luffy ate an Akuma no Mi, which gave him the ability to stretch every part of his body. After revealing his secret, the young man asks Kobe what he would like to do with his life and discovers that the young man's biggest dream is to become a naval officer to protect people. Excited by the idea of helping him realize his dream, Luffy decides to change his route and sails to the nearest navy base. So, as well as allowing your friend to join a group of marines, he'll also have the chance to steal a map that will take him to the Grand Line. When they arrive in the city of Shells, the pair decide to go to a restaurant to eat before starting their mission. There, they spot a swordsman called Roronoa Zoro and a little girl approaches him to hand him a plate of onigiri. At that moment, Rika accidentally drops the food on Helmeppo and the man is furious. After stepping on the food, he threatens the girl and arouses Zoro's ire. After eating a piece of the crushed food, the swordsman kindly compliments Rika on her talent in the kitchen and orders Helmeppo to eat the onigiris he stepped on. Upon hearing this, the young man takes out his katana and attacks Zoro, who manages to knock him down without even taking his sword out of its sheath. When they see Captain Morgan's son being attacked, other officers attack the swordsman, but the green-haired young man manages to get rid of them easily without having to draw any of his swords. During the battle, a young girl called Nami takes advantage of the distraction to attack a marine and drag him into a hiding place so she can steal his uniform. After all the chaos he has caused, Zoro goes to meet Captain Morgan, who is in charge of the base. The young swordsman makes his living as a bounty hunter and has just taken the head of a fugitive to collect the money. When he meets the most feared pirate hunter in the East Blue, Morgan congratulates him on his incredible skill in battle and says he will pay the reward for the fugitive he has captured. But first, the swordsman will have to serve a sentence for attacking a group of navy soldiers. 
if he wants to get his money, Zoro will have to spend seven days hanging in a courtyard and, if he refuses to serve his sentence, he will never be able to work as a bounty hunter again. So the young man decides to accept his punishment and Helmeppo makes fun of him. Then Zoro says that when he is released, the young man will beg to live. The next morning, Nami wears the uniform she stole and breaks into the navy base looking for the map of the Grand Line. Luffy intends to do the same and uses an alternative passage that takes him to the courtyard where Zoro is. Realizing that this is the swordsman who fought the marines the night before, the young man decides to untie him and invites him to join his band of pirates. However, Zoro refuses the invitation and reveals that he has spent the last few years of his life hunting pirates in order to survive. So Luffy decides to continue his mission. While searching the base, Nami is unmasked and has to fight off two marines to avoid being arrested. After defeating them, she hides the duo's body and hears Luffy falling into the room. The young man has heard the whole conversation and knows that Nami is an intruder, just like him. So the two decide to help each other so that they don't end up being captured and head for Morgan's office. Just then, the captain appears and Nami says that she is escorting that pirate to prison. This way, they get rid of Axe Hand and the girl even manages to steal the keys to his office. Meanwhile, Zoro goes after Helmeppo to retrieve his sword and, instead of eliminating him, decides to just cut the young man's hair. After breaking into the captain's office, Luffy helps Nami find the map. The problem is that it's stuck inside a safe and Morgan has realized that his office has been broken into. While he is trying to destroy the door, the pirate manages to steal the safe and they are both thrown out of the window. After the crash, the pair are attacked by a group of marines and have to band together to defeat them. While Nami uses her staff to attack the enemies, Luffy strikes them with his rubber arms and legs, at which point Zoro appears. The young man has just recovered his three swords and decides to help Luffy, as a thank you for being freed by him. When they finally manage to eliminate the soldiers, the captain appears and the trio must defeat him. Just then, other officers arrive on the scene and Nami attacks them while Luffy and Zoro plan how to get rid of Morgan, as he is extremely strong. Zoro then draws his three swords and manages to immobilize his opponent. Then the straw hat attacks him with its rubber leg and the old man is defeated. After winning the battle, the swordsman takes the safe and Nami steals a boat so that the group can escape. Suddenly, Helmeppo appears and threatens to shoot the gang, but the man is taken by surprise and loses consciousness after receiving a punch from Kobe. At that moment, the young man says goodbye to his friend and tells him that he will stay at the base to become a member of the navy. So the trio continue on their way and that night, after hours of trying to discover the secret of the safe, Nami finally manages to get her hands on the precious map. Just when everything seems to be going well, the boat is attacked and a plume of red smoke causes the crew to lose consciousness. However, before he passes out, Luffy manages to swallow the map to keep it safe inside his own body. When they wake up, they discover that they are trapped inside a wooden box and, when it is opened, the group realizes that they have been taken to a bizarre circus. It's not long before they discover that they've been taken to an island and the spectators are actually the townspeople who are being held prisoner. Buggy then appears and reveals that he had been planning to steal the Grand Line map for several months. However, now that those youngsters have done all the hard work, everything is easier. As they refuse to reveal the location of the map, Buggy decides to interrogate them separately and Luffy is the first to be attacked. In front of the whole audience, the straw hat has its arms and legs tied and the clown says he will stretch it until it tells him where the map is hidden. Noticing that his plan isn't working, Buggy decides to appeal to Luffy's emotional side and takes a young boy to use as a guinea pig for his madness. When he realizes that the little boy is in trouble, the pirate manages to free himself and attacks him. Then everyone discovers that Buggy has also eaten an Akuma no Mi and has the ability to dismember his entire body. At that moment, he uses the red smoke to knock Luffy unconscious and, when he wakes up, the young man discovers that he is trapped in a glass box that is filling up with seawater. Despite giving their users great powers, Akuma no Mi has a disadvantage. Everyone who eats this fruit is weakened when they come into contact with the ocean. Even though he knows he could be eliminated in that tank, Luffy refuses to give the map to the clown and ends up drowning. At that moment, some memories come to mind. As a child, Luffy was captured by an evil pirate and taken out to sea. The man intended to leave the young man there to drown, but he ended up being devoured by a sea monster. Luffy was to be the next target, but Shanks managed to save him. They were on a small boat in the middle of the ocean when the creature approached and devoured the red-haired man's arm. However, when he looked into the pirate's eyes, the monster felt threatened and returned to the depths. At this point, Luffy realized that his friend's arm had been devoured and felt guilty about what had happened. A few days later, Shanks and his gang set off on a new journey and, as a farewell present, he gave Luffy his straw hat. 
From that moment on, it became the young man's greatest treasure. While Luffy is trapped in the glass box, Zoro is being interrogated by one of Buggy's henchmen and distracts Kabaji so that Nami can break free from the cage and attack him. The young woman then frees her friend and they both go after the straw hat. Seeing him in danger, Nami uses her staff to break the glass and Luffy expels the map. After catching it, Buggy splits his body into dozens of pieces and uses each one to attack Zoro and Nami. When he sees what the clown has done to his companions, Luffy attacks him, but is also defeated. At this point, he comes up with the idea of trapping Buggy's body inside crates and, with the help of his friends, manages to get rid of every part of him. Finally, Luffy throws what's left of the clown out of the tent and manages to retrieve the map. Before leaving, the trio frees the villagers, who are immensely grateful. Now that they have the map, their next destination is the Grand Line, but to get there they need a ship. So the team decides to stop off at the Gecko Islands and Nami investigates local security to find out the best time to steal a boat. While walking around the shipyard, Luffy finds the perfect ship and meets Usopp. The young man works cleaning the ships, but claims to be a good friend of the owner of all those ships. When he arrives at the mansion, the young man is greeted by Butchi, who doesn't seem happy to see him. Luckily, Kaya shows up just in time and invites Usopp and his friends to her birthday party. Clahador is the girl's butler and he doesn't like that idea one bit. Since Kaya's parents perished, he has become the girl's legal representative and the person she trusts most. To please her, he asks Sham to take the new guests up to the suite so they can get ready for dinner. Minutes later, Usopp uses a secret passage to visit Kaya in her room and gives her her birthday present. While they are talking, the young woman starts coughing and only gets better when she drinks the tea that Clahador prepares for her. Three years ago, Kaya became very ill and no medicine has ever been able to cure her. Hours later, the gang joins the other guests in the ballroom and Nami meets Mr. Mary, who is responsible for looking after Kaya's finances. The man has worked for the family for many years and is also very dear to the girl. Now that she is turning 18, Kaya will become the owner of her parents' entire estate and Mary tries to warn her about some documents she intends to sign, but is interrupted by Clahador. When it's time for dinner, Butchie serves a blue soup made exclusively for Kaya, as the young woman has to keep to a very strict diet. However, when she is about to eat, she starts coughing and is taken to her room. As it's getting late, she invites Usopp and his friends to spend the night at the mansion and, at the end of the party, Clahador goes to talk to Mary. Knowing that the man will try to stop Kaya from transferring the shipyard to him, the butler decides to show his claws and stabs Mary in the back. After collecting all the pieces of his body, Buggy receives a visit from one of Arlong's henchmen and is captured by him. When he finds the fishman, Buggy discovers that the town he sacked belonged to him and Arlong decides to eliminate him. In an attempt to save himself, the clown claims to know where the map of the Grand Line is and offers to help Arlong find it. In the early hours of the morning, Luffy leaves his room to look for food and Zoro goes in search of a bottle of rum. Coincidentally, the two meet and walk together to the kitchen. Meanwhile, Mommy takes the opportunity to clean out some items in the mansion, but is discovered when she accidentally enters Kaya's room. Even when she discovers that Nami is a thief, the girl doesn't harbor any bad feelings towards her. Instead, Kaya chats amiably with her guest and the two end up becoming friends. When he arrives in the kitchen, the two companions find Usopp and the young man informs them that there is a wine cellar in the basement of the mansion. Then Zoro asks him to guide him there and Luffy stays in the kitchen to devour the pot of soup that has been made for Kaya. While searching the place, Usopp stumbles over Mary's body and then the Clahador appears. That man is actually called Kuro and used to be the captain of the Black Cat Pirates. The Navy said that the pirate had been eliminated by Morgan, but apparently he managed to escape elimination. Upon discovering the truth, Zoro quickly draws his swords, but Sham sneaks up behind him and attacks him with a bottle. Usopp is the next target, but the young man manages to escape and runs for help. Clahador then orders his henchmen to dispose of Mary and the swordsman's bodies in the pit so that they will never be found. While running around the city asking for help, Usopp meets Kobe and Helmeppo, who are now Navy cadets and have been sent to the island with the mission of capturing Luffy. Convinced that they are the good guys, Usopp reveals that his friend is in danger and asks the marines to help him arrest the butler. After a long conversation with Kaya, Mommy goes to the kitchen and finds Luffy passed out. Suddenly, Clahador and his cronies appear and the girl has to hide. From the trio's conversation, Nami understands that the soup Luffy ate was poisoned and the butler is furious because he intended to give it to Kaya. Just then, Kobe rings the doorbell and the butler goes to answer the door. When he finds him, Usopp says that Clahador is the pirate who wants to eliminate his friend, but as he has no proof of his accusations, the marines can't take action. 
Then Helmeppo says that the group has been sent to capture a fugitive called Luffy and, in an attempt to get rid of the Marines, Clahador hands the young man over to them. At that moment, Nami takes advantage of Sham being alone to attack her with a frying pan and Usopp rushes to warn Kaya about the danger the young woman is in. When she discovers that the man she trusts most is planning to eliminate her, the girl goes into shock and her head only drops when Nami appears and informs her that Clahador has been poisoning Kaya all these years through tea. The trio quickly use one of the secret passages to escape, but are found by the butler when the girl starts coughing. Luckily, they manage to shake off the attacks and reach Kaya's parents' old room. A few hours after being attacked, Zoro wakes up and starts climbing up the well to the surface. On the way back to the Navy ship, Kobe begins to wonder if what Usopp said was really true and suddenly Luffy wakes up. After getting rid of all the soup he had eaten, the young man manages to recover. Soon afterwards, Zoro appears and they both return to the mansion. Meanwhile, Clahador arrives at the room where the trio are hiding and the three youngsters have to avoid being found while listening to the man destroying the whole place. When they realize that they won't be able to hide for long, Kaya and Nami decide to confront the enemy, but end up being captured. After breaking into the house, Zoro and Luffy split up to look for their friends and the swordsman ends up being found by Sham and Butchie. He has to fight the pirates while Straw Hat faces Clahador. With great skill and mastery, Zoro manages to defeat the enemies with the help of his swords and sets off to find the rest of his gang. At this point, Luffy is trying not to get sliced by Clahador and, after grabbing his arms, uses his own head to throw him out of the mansion. After capturing the imposters, Luffy and his friends have to flee, as the navy already knows they are on that island. As a reward for all the help the pirates have given, Kaya decides to give them a ship and the crew invites Usopp to accompany them on their journey. After saying goodbye to Kaya, the young man heads off with his new friends to the Grand Line and Luffy celebrates his first pirate ship. Suddenly, his ship begins to be attacked and Luffy discovers that it is his grandfather who is trying to capture him. Furious, Garp throws a cannonball at the young man's ship with his bare hands, but the straw hat forms a balloon with his body and returns the attack to the enemy ship. In this way, he manages to knock down one of the sails and the marines begin to move more slowly. Thanks to this, the pirates manage to escape and, after a few hours of travel, decide to stop off at a maritime restaurant called Baradier. One of the cooks is actually a young man called Sanji, whose talent is not properly recognized by Chef Zef. After cooking another dish that isn't on the menu, Sanji is ordered to wait tables and has to use his incredible martial arts skills to break up a fight between two customers. Seeing that he has lost track of Luffy, Garp contacts Mihawk, the best swordsman in the world. Garp orders the man to capture the straw hat. The guy is so powerful that he can destroy an entire ship with his sword and claims that his mission will soon be completed. That night, Mihawk arrives at the Baradier and listens to Usopp telling some of the stories he's experienced alongside Luffy since he became a pirate. He then asks the young man to introduce him to his crew and says that his mission is to get Luffy into the navy. Seeing that man with a cross on his chest, Zoro immediately recognizes him and challenges him to a sword duel. The young man reveals that, ever since he was a child, his greatest dream has been to defeat Mihawk in a fight and take on the title of the world's greatest swordsman. The man accepts the challenge and says that Zoro will be eliminated at dawn. After telling Luffy the news, the young man can hardly sleep while waiting for the fight and, the next morning, he meets Mihawk at the agreed location. When the battle begins, the man uses a mini-sword to fight and claims that Zoro is not worthy to face the legendary Yuru. Even with his miniature katana, Mihawk manages to wound the young man, but Zoro doesn't back down. Impressed by the young man's insistence, the swordsman draws his Yuru and manages to use it to destroy two of Zoro's three swords. When he realizes what has happened, the bounty hunter accepts his defeat and opens his arms so that his opponent can execute him. At that moment, Mihawk makes a deep cut in Zoro's abdomen and says that it's not yet time for him to perish. Before leaving, he advises Zoro to continue his training and says that he will be waiting to fight him again. Seeing his friend collapsed, the gang carries him into the ship and Luffy returns to the Baradier in search of help. As there is no doctor in the restaurant, Sanji and Zeft decide to go there to help him. After stitching up the wound, the old man uses fish skin to cover it and Zoro's friends take him to his room. Hours later, Arlong arrives at the Baradier with two other members of his group and threatens to devour the customers if Zef doesn't reveal Luffy's whereabouts. Just then, Nami is in the restaurant and rushes to relay the information to her captain. She says that the crew must leave immediately, but Luffy refuses to let innocent people be hurt because of her. So he goes after Arlong and discovers that one of Buggy's ears has been hidden in his hat all this time. That's how the fishman managed to find him. When Arlong is distracted, Zef takes the opportunity to shoot at them but his bullet doesn't cause a scratch on the shark. 
Immediately, Kurubi attacks the old man and Sanji jumps on him in defense of his boss. After the cook is defeated, Luffy attacks the shark, but soon discovers that he is no match for it. The young man is thrown out of the establishment and is about to be eliminated when Nami appears and informs him that she has managed to steal the map. Just then, the crew discovers that the young woman has been working for Arlong all this time and she manages to convince the shark not to eliminate Luffy. Hours later, Zoro wakes up and discovers the truth about Nami. Even after being betrayed, the Straw Hat believes that his friend was just another victim of Arlong and decides to go and rescue her. After refueling their ship, the crew is preparing to leave when Sanji shows up and informs them that he will be joining them to become the crew's official cook. To help them find Nami, the pirates will enlist the help of Buggy, who will show them the way to the Fishmen's Sanctuary. When they get there, they have to pass through a village, where they find Nami collecting taxes from the villagers. Everyone in Kokoyashi village hates the girl, including her own sister. Seeing her former companions in the village, Nami orders them to leave and says she doesn't need their help. Realizing that the young woman isn't telling the truth, Luffy decides to pay her sister a visit and convinces Najiko to tell him everything she knows. When they were both children, their village was invaded by Arlong's gang and all the villagers had to pay a tax to survive. As she didn't have enough money to save herself and the girls, the girl's mother decided to sacrifice herself so that they could live. After hearing this story, the group wonders why Nami is working for the guy who eliminated her mother and Luffy is sure that she is being forced to do so. That night, the girl reminds Arlong of the deal they made and says that she managed to collect the 100 million berries to buy Kokoyashi Village. Surprised to learn that Nami has managed to collect all this money, Arlong asks her to go and collect it and take it back to the shrine. Then, when the young woman goes to collect her payment, the shark orders Karubi to go after Nizumi, a navy agent who is on the outskirts of the village. Minutes later, Nami arrives at her mother's grave and starts digging. When she pulls out a chest, Najiko appears and orders her sister to explain what she's doing with all that money. After being discovered, the young woman says that when her mother perished, she offered to work for Arlong's gang because she had a great ability to draw maps. In exchange for her service, Nami received the right to buy Kokoyashi Village for 100 million berries. This would give her the chance to free her people. Upon discovering the truth, Najiko feels guilty for having hated her sister for all these years and asks her for forgiveness. At that moment, Nizumi appears with other marines and confiscates the treasure on the pretext that the money has been stolen. When she sees those men taking the money she has spent her whole life saving, Nami despairs and runs to the beach. However, they had already managed to escape. Just then, Luffy approaches and, for the first time in her life, Nami confesses that she needs help. When she sees her friends willing to help her after everything she has done, the young woman is moved and even more surprised when she sees the villagers themselves coming together to support her. That morning, the five friends invade the sanctuary and join forces to fight a battle against the fishmen. Luffy and Nami go after Arlong while the rest of the team confront his followers. At this point, Usopp begins to be chased by Chu and runs into the forest, hoping to lose him. When he meets Arlong, Luffy is furious at the cruelty with which he treats Nami and destroys his weapon. He then orders his friend to get out of there while he eliminates the shark, just as he did with all those who tried to hurt his friends. Outside, while Zoro and Sanji continue the battle against their opponents, Buggy manages to recover his body and escapes. In the forest, Usopp has to dodge the numerous bursts of drink thrown by Chu and pretend to be eliminated so he can attack him with his explosive fire bullet. After a few minutes of trying to hurt Arlong, Luffy realizes that his blows are having no effect and decides to follow a new plan. He uses his superpowers to destroy the columns that support the palace and causes the whole building to collapse. In an attempt to stop the attack, Arlong runs towards the pirate, but Luffy uses his rubber leg to hit him and destroy his mansion once and for all. At that moment, the entire building collapses and the crew begins to think that their captain is eliminated, but everyone is relieved when Luffy emerges from the rubble. Now that the villagers have been freed, they throw a party to celebrate and the navy interrupts the celebration. Garp then orders his men to surround the crew and challenges Luffy to a fight. The old man still hasn't accepted the fact that his grandson chose to be a pirate instead of following in his footsteps and becoming a marine. Although he is old and has no special powers, Garp proves to be stronger than Luffy and throws the young man away every time he punches him. After a few blows, the straw hat can barely move and yet he says he will never give up on his dream. The young man promises that he will soon find one piece and begins to smile as he imagines himself being the king of the pirates. At that moment, Garp looks at his grandson and remembers Gold D. Roger, who, even in the face of elimination, never lost the twinkle in his eye. Immediately, the Vice Admiral frees Luffy and decides to let him go on his way. After saying goodbye to the young man, 
he orders his men to arrest Arlong and his followers. The next morning, Kobe goes to break the news to his old friend and Luffy is thrilled to discover that his face is on a wanted poster. After embracing, the two friends say goodbye once more and the captain goes to tell his gang the news. Now that Luffy's head is valued at 30 million berries, countless bounty hunters will go after him and his crew, but that doesn't worry him. Before setting off on his next adventure, the Straw Hat receives a gift from his companions and gets a personalized sail for his ship. Overjoyed, he feels he has everything he needs to succeed in his mission. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.